Well, uh, we have come to the end of a three month course and that this would complete the 12 week uh, course on machinery fault diagnostics and signal processing. I hope those of you who have registered online had a wonderful learning experience as I had uh, told right in the beginning in the introductory video in this lecture on machinery fault diagnosis and signal processing. Well, there are limitations uh, as to know this is not a formal classroom where there are students live and interacting with me and asking me questions. And uh, let me tell you, uh, this is, uh, I am not a movie star and uh, all these recordings which have been done were uncut and uh, they were uh, done on the fly. There were no retakes, uh, so there would have been mistakes and slips in some terminology, some spelling mistakes, some mispronunciations. So, please excuse me for that. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, I, need, I was as formal as I could be, but then being formal by a teacher has limitations in the classroom. A lot of things does not flow through. You know. Uh, being in the internet, I cannot cut too many jokes and so on. But then, uh, you would have got a flavor of uh, what machinery fault diagnosis and signal processing is. And you yourselves would have also come up to the idea that what are the new trending areas in uh, condition based monitoring. So, I have listed some of them. Okay. And these are the future trends in uh, condition monitoring. And uh, so, I will go and explain one by one these uh, techniques or these trends which are happening. Uh, well, the first one is this smart and fault tolerant sensors. Today, the technology in instrumentation electronics is such that we can have sensors which will auto correct themselves. Imagine, because as I has told you, wrong measurements is no measurements. So, when we use a transducer, how do you know whatever voltage signal you are getting is correct? That is the first question you need to ask yourself. Because in a system which is driven by software, if I have some data in, I will definitely get a data out, but garbage in is garbage out. You may be having the best software on the earth. You know, best today, people are talking about data analytics. You have the best data analytics software in the market. I am sure many, my, many of my friends are you know, doing a lot of work in data analytics in uh, artificial intelligence. In IIT Kharagpur, we have uh, proudly announced that we are going to have an artificial intelligence center working on data analytics. But then, my four friends and should also wonder about the data which is going into the system. Is it correct? Okay. And as you would have seen in CBM, everything relies on the signal coming out of the transducers. So, what I say is smart and fault tolerant sensors. So, sensors must be able to give you a signal if they have a fault in them. Okay. Either an open circuit or a short circuit or over range. Okay. So, these are issues over range, okay. open circuit of course, you will not get any 
signal short circuit beyond frequency range. Okay. So, this needs to be built into the sensor systems and then auto correct. Auto correct may be remove the bias error. Okay. And remotely checking the condition <coughs> of all transducers deployed in the field. This goes without saying because you know I, 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 I am a strong believer of doing you know measurements on CBM most of my career so far and doing analyzing them. I have seen my students producing nice color graphs, but they fail to understand or demonstrate the basic physics. Okay. So, always have this sanity check in it. You know, suppose somebody says you know you are measuring the temperature in a classroom and says you know the temperature is you know 70 degree Celsius okay, and builds all his theory and models based on that. But you know 70 degree centigrade in a classroom does not make sense at most maybe even in a hot summer it could be 40, 45. So, these are sanity checks a uh, good field engineer also needs to have or do on the data which has measured. And of course, coming to the next point on laser based monitoring. Okay. You would have seen there are cases where I have to measure on large structures. Okay. And from large distances, okay, and structures are light, are light. When structures are light, I cannot put a physical transducer because it would load the structure. So, I can shoot laser beams from one location and because of the Doppler shift, I can find out the vibrations at any point I want. Okay. So, I can have scanning laser vibrometer, I can have point laser vibrometer and I would have seen in rotational machines many a times we put our transducers on the bearings, the accelerometers, because if this is rotating, I cannot, but then with rotational laser vibrometer, you can measure the rotational velocity theta dot. So, in the torsional domain, lot of studies can be done and we have seen in our laboratory, but measuring the rotational laser vibrometer, the signal to noise ratio is very high and they are non-contacting as opposed to a contact type accelerometer. Okay. So, but then the trend is that these equipment are very costly, so they need to become cheaper, so that everybody can afford. So, a lot of research needs to be done on this laser based uh, imaging. I will again give you an example. Uh, this has been happening. Suppose, somebody is carrying a uh, explosive in a bag. I am giving you some ideas. 
So, if I shoot a laser beam, okay, and then if I get the reflection at different locations, if I find that suddenly that the vibrations are suddenly damped, we can do a correlation as to this damping is because of a particular damped material which could be an explosive. So, quick scanning of bags by such lasers, wherein we give some sort of an ultrasonic excitation. Where or damped material would reduce the vibration. So, this is one way. So, there are a lot of applications of this laser based measurements and yesterday I was talking about in the last class on mode shapes. So, we can have scanning laser vibrometers, wherein in one go you can get the mode shapes of a plate or a structure okay, by putting a laser beam in one. So, there will be a different patch you know this could be in you know, a some distance may be 2 meter by 1 meter or 2 meter by and shoot a laser beam an array of laser beam. This can also happen. Okay. So, laser based monitoring is again an emerging area. Now, you are talking about embedded systems for Internet of Things. Today, when we are talking about you know, IoT in CBM, because any device or appliances we can have sensors okay, to monitor parameter and they can have wi fi transmission Then we can have cloud computing and then we can make a decision on the appliance condition. Today with this IP 6 protocol, every square inch of the earth surface going to have an in a unique IP address both on the ground, underground, above the ground with IP 6 protocol. So, if every device has an dedicated IP address and then it has a sensor inbuilt in it or an appliance inbuilt in it, the signal is measured, it is transmitted and then it is run on the cloud through lot of servers and this data could be accessed by different people at different locations and then a decision can be made on the plan. This could be done for, for example, in a sitting in Kharagpur, I could be monitoring gas turbines in Alaska. Okay. This used to be science fiction you know, maybe 20 years ago, but no, it is very uh, a thing which is happening now and Wi Fi wireless transmission. Of course, you know I had told you the limitations of wireless transmission with the speed rates of transmission. You know, today our friends in the electronics industries and communications are talking about 5 G spectrum. So, this is also going to happen and which is going to help we mechanical engineers you know, collect data, send it at high speeds do the analysis as per the algorithms which we know be it any algorithm okay be it soft computing support vector machines and neural networks uh, 
plain simple regression okay and then we can come up to a decision okay so wireless monitoring is again a thing which is going to happen in a very big way and today transducers are available which in you can have an wifi module okay and then we also have this drone survey okay i'll give you a recent example and we we are working on a mine okay where iron ore needs to be come up this distance is about 2 kilometers and this elevation is about 800 meters and this is about you know 200 meters so you can imagine these are all iron ore mines so it is very steep okay as you go and if you do the contouring of this so such in because the raw material here has to be conveyed and brought to this location so we do a lot of drone surveying wherein we can have an elevation and the uh, map of this location with the distance from this location so this was early, earlier you know people used to take theodolites you know walk up the steep slopes of the hill okay but these are things of the past okay so such drone surveys are helping us you know uh decide on the material handling equipment to be put on the top of the mine to the base of the loading point or unloading point we have loading here unloading here so what kind of material handling equipment do i need to put here what kind of drives conveyor systems you know which are environmental friendly people are talking about you know not trough conveyors or flat conveyors but other pipe conveyors okay uh, material handling units and then what should be the life of the motor so these uh, whether do we have enough space to keep the material okay so this drone survey is helping us so imagine technologies progressing in all directions but we need to use them for cbm or be it for machinery health so we have this wireless remote monitoring also which is happening and then another technique which has come up is this motor current signature analysis you have seen how by using a simple hall effect sensor which is very cheap any machinery which is remotely located i can put an hall effect sensor and then i can measure and this could be machine could be underground like a submersible pump or a nuclear reactor or any place where it is humanly not possible so we not worry about this machine just measure the you know there will be a power supply cable to the machine so put a hall effect sensor around the current carrying conductor and do a current analysis so this again is a very very emerging technique and uh, let me tell you proudly again this is out of the research we did at iit kharagpur about 20 years ago and this has become very popular so mcsa clubbed with wifi cloud computing and embedded technologies okay can be very effective in handling many of these fault diagnosis problem so when you are talking about iot and cbm imagine if you have an ac in your house and you need not even 
bother to maintain its condition. Suddenly, a technician walked up to your door and said, you know, your AC blower needs certain maintenance and a blower is uh, foul or uh, your electric supply board, there is a defect. You would be wondering how did they come to know about it. So, today the technology is such that in this appliance, if I put an Hall effect sensor and with an Wi-Fi transmitter, it is transmitting and then if you have uh, the right protocol set, it could be putting this data onto the cloud and the OEM of the AC company could be analyzing the data of course, for a fee and then they could be only deputing technicians where we do not have to worry about uh, this technology. You, know, you must have heard about this you know, Amazon stores wherein you, know, you just walk into the store and fill into your shopping bag and just walk out of the store. How is this happening? Because every product is RFID track, tag and then whatever product you put and then you just walk out the doors, it will be automatically debited from your account and you will get a bill. So, this is the technology which has come to Amazon stores and it can come anywhere. Okay. Imagine you know you are uh, uh, just you are, you are uh, taking a um, uh, bath in your um, bathroom and then all suddenly you realize that you have run out of shampoo. Okay. So, you have to run up to the store to remember that you have to buy a shampoo for the next day, but imagine if this is tracked that you have run out of shampoo and then automatically it will be informed to your nearest store, they will be delivered to your house and then it will be automatically debited from your account, the amount will be automatically debited from your account. So, you have this pad which on which you just place that shampoo bottle and then things takes care of it. So, you save time in the long run and the hassles of going to the store, finding out a parking uh, for your vehicle, finding out a transport, you know, maybe you are busy the whole day. So, this is how technology is, has helped and this technology is also helping us in CBM. And then of course, you know, there is uh, no end to the stories of machine learning and particularly data analytics, uh, which everybody is talking about. But let me tell you, data analytics is not new and this is, I am as a hardcore mechanical engineer, I am telling you. When we did y is equal to mx plus c and simple regression, I am sure all of you have done that in your engineering labs. Was that not data analytics? That was. Okay. So, it is, I would say it is old wine in a new bottle is people have phrased data analytics, but more important than that is if data is wrong, everything is wrong. Okay. I mean, you can develop nice algorithms, uh, you can generate synthetic data through software and analyze it, but uh, we need to wake up that real time data, real data, actual data, issues of signal to noise ratios, issues of instrumentation, issues of measurement errors, they will never go. One has to realize this. Okay. So, uh, I, I agree that data analytics is fine, but application of data analytics in real engineering field to help CBM is very important and I am very pretty vocal about it, excuse me for saying so, but this is what uh, life is going to be. I mean, we, if we cannot be that, in a, everything will be solved by data analytics if we are grossly wrong. Okay? So, we need to have the right data. And of course, towards the end, you would have seen uh, this online monitoring, because uh, if the data is available, we can do online monitoring. And whatever CBM I had done right in the beginning was uh, signal based. But today, it is going to be system based and then we can have a lot of model based fault detection systems and fault prognostics being developed for rotodynamics models and uh, 
many professors in the universities and the researchers are developing model based systems for such rotor dynamic systems and we at IIT Kharagpur are also doing it. Of course, uh, it goes without saying that uh, continuing education which we did in this three month course has to go ahead because uh, the industry or the people outside the academia needs to be informed about the developments which is happening and I regularly conduct even you know one week, two week customized courses on condition based monitoring, acoustics and noise control where students get to see uh, the practical demonstrations in the laboratory as well. We have you know, uh, almost every year a uh, one week program on condition monitoring. We have uh, international guests delivering in some of the lectures and so on. So, this has to continue continuing education be it um, offline, online, real time has to happen because uh, knowledge is uh, every day you know different domains of knowledge and expertise are becoming available and that needs to be told. Okay. Of course, you know towards the end I must uh, acknowledge uh, even those of you who are online, I must acknowledge two of my TAs, uh, one is uh, Mr. Biswajit Sahu who is a research scholar working on uh, condition monitoring with me who is the TA who is will be helping you with the forums, uh, with the assignments and uh, another is uh, Chenmai Mahapatra, she is also a research scholar in the areas of uh, acoustics uh, source identification and uh, noise control. So, these uh, two folks have helped me uh, run this course. Of course, I must also thank the folks at our uh, continuing uh, education technology center who are uh, doing a wonderful job video recording the courses and uh, prodding me to finish the course recordings and so on and so forth. I must uh, thank all the people in the background who are doing all this uh, excellent job of video recording and reproducing and putting the contents online. So, at the end I would say uh, if there are slips and mistakes please excuse me and then uh, of course, you can always see go to my book contact me and then uh, my email uh, and they say that this email is going to change instead of rnet it is become going to become ac. So, I will keep you informed on iitnoise.com and those of you who still do not have an access to my book uh, please uh, find them in amazon and that will be uh, very good and then I hope you all had a good learning experience. I look forward to getting emails from all of you on a feedback to this course. Thank you.